فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله for the non-Muslim the more you speak English so I'll be okay you will understand inshallah some of the stuff that I will say uh, first of all let me introduce myself uh, my name is Kareem Abu Zaid I'm originally from Egypt. Uh, I have been in the United States for the last 20 years almost. Um, and that's all what I can say about that. Uh, I'm very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the opportunity uh, to present the subject to you. And I'm really amazed as I was approaching campus tonight uh, I can tell that you had a lot of other, uh, you know, events that could be more attractive uh, to you. I heard of uh, uh, some music event, and uh, there is a basketball uh, game, and there is a volleyball. So the fact that you're actually uh, choosing to spend the time to learn about that subject, that tells you a lot about who you are. So you should be proud of yourselves tonight. The subject is the certainty. What will happen after we die? Um, we in America here, uh, we should always uh, try to find common subjects that can bring us together so we can learn about one another. I think there is something common about all of us, whether you are a Muslim, Christian, a Jew, that we all going to die. There is no question. You can't argue that. It's a common thing for all of us that we will die. Now, you happen tonight to learn the perspective of Islam regarding what happens after we die. And I think you taking this and going back home uh, would be something very beneficial uh, to get to know about Muslims and uh, another uh, group of people in this country. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce the subject uh, under the larger and broader, if I may use the word, which is faith, belief. Faith, the basis of any religion, faith is not merely conviction of the truth of a given principle, but it's essentially the acceptance of a principle as the basis for action. Without faith, a man is like a car without a steering wheel, drifting aimlessly upon a sea of doubt and confusion. I guess what I'm trying to say is I live my life in accordance to what I believe. I could be dressed like this, looking like this, to maybe to make some living. But I'm really dressed like this, doing like this, because I believe this is... And I'm not talking about just dressing. I'm just using it as an example. Because I believe this is the right thing to do with my life. This is the way to go. And I'm certain about that. In Islam, two dimensions. Faith in Allah and the hereafter. 
The fundamentals of belief are generally summarized as belief in Allah and the hereafter. For the Muslims speaking, uh, for the Muslims here who always hear, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ You will find a lot of people saying that we believe in Allah and the hereafter. Because this is what defines your faith, the belief in Allah and the hereafter. Uh, first of all, for the non-Muslims or non-Arabs in particular, uh, using the word Allah, uh, I'm really referring to God with a capital G, Allah. And I want to let you know something that we do have Arabs who are Christian and Jews. And we do actually have the Old Testament and the New Testament translated into Arabic. We do have an Arabic translation of the New and Old Testament. You know when they refer to God with a capital G in the Arabic version of the New and the Old Testament, you know what name they use? What? Allah. And those are Christian and Jews. But they refer to God with a capital G, He's Allah. What do you mean by believing in Allah? Believe in His existence. Very unfortunate that we do actually have people, of course they have the right to believe what they want to believe, who actually deny the existence of God. In front of, in spite of, of seeing signs, clear signs that indicate His existence. So you must believe that He exists. And I mean by believe, firm belief, beyond any shadow of doubt. You cannot question it. He exists. Believe in His Lordship, meaning that He is the Creator. And there is no other Creators. He is the Creator of everything. He is not created so. We actually can use down-to-earth English by saying He doesn't have a birthday. God doesn't have a birthday. Meaning, He has no beginning. He always exists. He's eternal. And He's ever-living. We are created. Tonight we are discussing what will happen to us after we die. But God, Allah, is ever-living. And for Allah to live, He doesn't need. He doesn't eat, He doesn't drink, He doesn't need to sleep. He has an essence that, but a divine one. No one knows the greatness of that divine essence and we actually cannot see it in this world. The way that our body is fashioned, we cannot handle it. And we do have in our revelation and experiment, Prophet Moses actually, in Sinai requested to look at God. God told him, you will not be able to see me. We cannot comprehend him because of the greatness of his essence. He created him, he still owns, he is sovereign. Yeah, he gave us some temporary sovereignty over things. Uh, you know, whatever you have, what will happen to it? Whether you're going to spend it or you will pass it on to the next generation. And the next generation will pass it on to the next generation. And then at the end, every human being shall die. Guess who will inherit all of this? That is why one of his names is the inheritors. The inheritor, al-wariz. 
He also takes care of his creation, takes care of you and me. You may not pay, pay attention to this, but God in every single little detail of your lives. But we vary whether we see this or not. But He is in your lives. He helps you. He gives you chances. He loves you. He cares for you. You just have to see it. Look for it. He has beautiful names and attributes. Not like our names and attributes. His, no one is like him. He has the right to be worshipped and obeyed by you. So this is not my subject. I would love to make this my subject tonight. I believe in Allah. It's a very interesting subject. I can actually provide evidence that He exists for you. But the subject is the second piece, which is the belief in the hereafter. Believe in the hereafter and the things which will happen after we die and in the hereafter has an important place in the fundamental of our beliefs. Man who was created by the power and the will of Allah will die after living in this world for a while. And his body will decay and turn to soil. However, the spirit that forms the essence and the real existence of man will continue to live since it is not something material. Again, the point that I made at the very beginning of my presentation that we all shall die and we all shall become earth again. It's a fact. You cannot deny it. You cannot scale it. You cannot run away from it. If you run away from it, it will need you. And this is how actually it's worded in our revelation. <laughs> Say to them that death which you flee from, it will need you. Somewhere. Therefore man needs to believe in life in the hereafter. Because it's coming. Listen, if you want to dwell in the fact that I'm going to become a soil and end of story, that's your call to make. But I'm telling you, this is a serious business. What if, and I'm talking to non-Muslims here, because Muslims must have certainty that whatever is revealed regarding what will happen to you after death is beyond any question. But I'm talking to non-Muslims. What if I'm telling you right now is true? You see, a lot of the people in this world right now, listen, forget about that stuff. What will happen after we die? We're going to become birth to be end of story. That's an assumption. He is not sure about that. But my question to him, what if I'm going to tell you tonight is true? Prohibited. 
doing good deeds, thus attaining the consent of Allah, that is by leading a complete life of submission. Islamic means submission. Our messenger says, and look at that highlight, work for this world as if you will live forever and work for the hereafter as if you would die tomorrow. What do you in the hereafter can do for you? If, let's assume tonight that after you die, you're going to be raised up again and you're going to be asked about what you've done with your lives. You're going to be questioned. Accountability. Let's assume tonight for an hour, that is the length of my presentation and a little bit more maybe, let's assume, I want you now to live with your heart that this will happen. Let's find out how this will impact your life. Believing Allah in the hereafter, the land of eternity, is the greatest assistant in renewing people's faith, hope, relieving the pains, and coping with the difficulties they face. I want to share with you a conversation I had with a professor. I was in uh, Salt Lake City, and uh, it's very rare that in Salt Lake City that you, you end up with agnostic, somebody who actually uh, still in the process of finding. So I had 15 minutes, 15 minutes to talk to him. He said, I have to leave in 15 minutes. Convince me. You, you, you're a clergy, that's the word that he used. Of course, we say you're an imam. You're a clergy. Convince me that there is God and there is a purpose behind this world. I had 15 minutes. I asked him two questions. Question number one, do you agree with me that there is injustice in this world? There is a level of injustice in this world. He said, yes, there is a great deal of injustice in our world. Then the second question, do you know Agree with me that all of those people who commit injustice, not all of them, get judged and punished for the oppression in this world. Meaning, here, here, I think I wrote it differently. I said, do you believe that all the oppressors receive judgment in this world and they get punished for the oppression, for the injustice which they committed towards other people? He said, no. A lot of them flee justice in this world. A lot of people do flee justice in this world. Run away from justice in this world. I told him, that is why there is a next life. When we all stand for justice, for judgment, in order for justice to prevail. And this is the purpose behind the whole thing. That this life is not in vain. And whatever you say, whatever you do in this life is recorded and you will be questioned regarding what you did and what you said. So imagine someone who is oppressed and he sees his oppressor fleeing justice. The Lord will not get him. How irritated he will be. How angry, frustrated he will be. You know where is the hope? God will get me my right in the day of resurrection. You know Islam is a religion that is accused of aggression and terrorism. Just want to share with you a scene in the day of resurrection. If you kill another person, Unjustly, in this world, we can discuss what is a, a, a just killer, but not in that form. But if you take the life of another person, you know what will happen in the day of resurrection, we're told? Look at the scene now. The person who is killed, 
will come in the day of resurrection carrying his head in his hands. And the veils of his neck, the veils of his neck are pouring blood. And he will be dragging his scale. This is in the land of gathering. He will be dragging his killer and he will go in front of Allah, in front of God, and he will say, Oh Allah, ask him why he killed me. Look at the scene. Take my ride from him. He killed me. I think that gives a lot of hope to a lot of people. Listen, you may be enjoying the justice of America, and I have to say that there is a great deal of justice in America. But there is a lot of injustice in the rest of the world. A lot of injustice. You know what those people are living for? That hope in the hereafter. Because they are weak. They cannot even break even. Allah will take my life in the day of resurrection. It's not over. It's not over. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ تَشْقَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ Don't you yet think that Allah doesn't see, doesn't know what the oppressors are doing? He knows. He sees it. And He will get them. Hope. A person with such belief will show patience. Because you see for me, what matters is the next life. For me this life is a test. It's a temporary. Stay. Uh, I always like to use the line, this world is a testing place, not a resting place. So now when you're tested, just be patient. Be patient. Believe in the game after makes man have two nice attributes. Grateful. If he's blessed, patience when he's tested. Believe in Allah and the hereafter leads man to do good deeds, charity, to avoid evil and bad deeds, to be equipped with high ethics, merits, to fear Allah, and to obey the divine criteria imposed by Allah. A person with such a belief will never abandon honestly, honesty. He will do everything in time and fully. He behaves honest, honestly towards himself, his family, his environment, his country, his nation, humanity. He accepted a principle to show love and compassion to them, to be useful for them and to serve them. He never abandons justice, he never oppresses anyone. He wants to be rich, but he will never do something bad or deceive anyone to make himself rich. He spends his money, property, on good and useful things. He knows his rights and respects the rights of others. He takes pleasure in helping the poor. He wants for others what he wants for himself because he definitely believes in the hereafter. That day of reward and punishment and knows that what is done in this world will be accounted for in the hereafter. He bases his acts on this principle. This principle is an important factor that arranges the lives of individuals and the society and ensure peace and tranquility. That's all an introduction, by the way. So, feel like you want to sleep or something. Okay, here's the serious stuff. We believe that we are in a journey to meet our Maker, our Creator. Ya ayyuha al-insan innaka kabihun ila rabbika kadhan famulaqih. That's a verse. 
for the revelation. Oh man, you are in a constant state of travel to meet your Lord, and one day you will meet your Lord. So you're in a journey. Now the journey has phases. Phase number one, no existence. Ask yourself this question, where were you before this world? Come on. هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِيمٌ مِنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا Man, you remember, you didn't exist. Who brought you into this world? Come on, did you create yourselves? Or are you created out of nothing? Who brought you to come to this world? So the first stage is no existence. You know, uh, Allah, God asked us this question in the Revelation. And, and a very interesting question. Look at this. كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا ثُمَّ أَحْيَاكُمْ ثُمَّ يُمِيتُكُمْ ثُمَّ يُحْيِيكُمْ how dare you explain your disbelief in Allah when you were dead, meaning you did not exist, they were giving you life, they were going to make you die, then he will resurrect you again. So we have four things here, no existence, we can be sure about that, that we did not exist before this world. Now we are alive. Now we are alive. That is true. The third one, that you will die. Can you deny that? Answer me, please. You will die, right? Yes. So what is left? He will raise you up again. So three already happened. Three things happen. There is the fourth one that is missing. Why are you arguing about the fourth one if he was able to do the first three? So no existence. Now, the second phase is life in the womb of the mother. Seven, eight months, nine months. Then we come out, walk, 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 look back into this world. You come into the third phase, which we are not right now, life in this world. So those are three. So you are at the third phase of the journey. The next phase is the grave. Actually, there is a life underneath the ground. And then the final phase is the eternal abode, the eternal life. Will you see and meet God and will you do not depart? But there are two ends, a good abode and a bad abode. Now we're hoping that tonight we're all going to the good one. All right? Three disclaimers quickly. All information provided in that presentation are supported by evidence from the Qur'an and the authenticated text from the sayings of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Why? Because we have a rule in our religion that you cannot talk about issues of unseen, things that are beyond the human senses without having a divine text. I cannot stand here and tell you, well, I think that and I think that. And, no, I take everything that I'm teaching tonight from the Quran and the Sunnah. The work of the unseen cannot be judged by our worldly laws because these events will simply take place in a different world, which we do not possess the knowledge of its governing laws. No place for intellect. You can't say what I think and you think. Those are three important rules before we move on. Okay, let's come to the serious business. And I'm afraid, uh, you know, I'm not going to scare you tonight. I don't want to do that. But,
here is the scenario of dying according to Islam. First of all, we are made of two components put together. What are those components? Anybody knows? What? Non-Muslim special. We're two things together. What? Yeah. Try again. Body and soul. Actually, we believe in Islam that when you are a fetus in the womb of the mother after 120 days, there is an angel who comes and blows the soul and that piece of flesh. Then the baby becomes alive. Now, how that happens is the separation of the body from the soul. The angel of death comes actually and he calls the soul out of the body. And sometimes he forces the soul out of the body. Extraction of the soul out of the body. So this is how we are. So let me ask you this question. How do you take care of your body? How do you nourish your body? Come on. How do you nourish your body? These are simple questions. Shower, that's a good one. Nourish. Olive gardens. Red lobsters. You eat, right? You work out. And you shower after you work out. What about that? But how do you take care of your soul? Don't you think that your soul also needs nourishment? How do you take care of your soul? How? Of course, Mr. Satan was so smart, he introduced spiritual drinks. Right? Or weed and marijuana, stuff like that. But really, the true nutrition for your soul is belief, is God, is submission. That's how you take care of your soul. Someone who nourished his life, who nourished his soul the proper nutrition, meaning submission. He believed in Allah. He believed that there is a next life. Now, he's about to die. What happens to him? And someone else who did not believe in all that stuff, and he nourished his soul, the bad things. He followed his whims and desires. What will happen to him when he dies? So those are two different scenarios. Which one would you like me to start with first? Huh? Which one? You choose. Come on. Which one? The bad guy? Oh man, that's a tough one. No, you never know. Don't, don't despair. Don't despair. You never know. The fact that you're here tonight tells all well about who you are. Okay, here it is. I'm going to start with the bad guy. Just before dying, you will receive uninvited guests. Why? Because you really didn't plan for them. Because death happens by all of a sudden. We could die now. We could die in 10 minutes. We actually don't know when we will die. But we believe that a group of angels will descend. A group of angels will descend just right before the death of an individual to prepare that person to die. If the person was wicked, did not nourish his soul, the proper nutrition, he disbelieved in Allah, disbelieved in the stuff that I'm presenting to you, 
These angels are very scary. They come and sit in front of him. The moment that he sees them, he's terrified. He's afraid. And by the way, this is the time when you decide to believe it's over. When you want to repent, it's over. Repentance, belief, will, will be no longer accepted at this stage. Because you already, the test is over. You flunk. You feel, here's the answer right here. You're supposed to believe that there are angels. You're supposed to believe that there is something that will happen to you after you die. You don't believe that. It's late. Can you answer the, the questions after receiving the answers from the professor when he shows it to you? It's too late. So they sit in front of him. Immediately he's terrified. They will tell him, be concerned about what to come because you didn't do very well with your life. At this stage, his soul will actually run away in his body. They would need to beat him up for the soul to be extracted. When the time is here, the zero minute is here, the angel of death, the one who is responsible for extracting the soul, will come and will call that soul out of the body. And here is how he calls it. All wicked soul dwell in a wicked body. Come out. They may need to beat that person up in order to get that soul out. Because again, he doesn't want to die. مَنْ كَرِهَ لِقَاءَ اللَّهِ كَرِهَ اللَّهُ لِقَاءَ وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ يَتَوَفَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَضْرِبُونَ وُجُوهَهُمْ وَأَدْبَارَهُمْ Come out. When the soul comes out, these angels will shroud it. Will place it in a piece of cloth. They brought it from fire. And then they will try to ascend with that soul to the heavens. But the heavens will not open. They will seek permission to enter. Access denied. And that soul will be thrown in earth. Joining the body in the grave. And will come back to that soul. But let me go to the good guy which we hope all of you are. If the person was righteous and pious, if he has believed in all of that and committed himself to that belief, I hope you're not assuming that you're gonna be 100% committed here. There's no such a thing. You're trying, you're striving to be a good person. You're working in it. That's God, by the way, what he wants to see from us. I hope you, you don't think that I'm talking about everybody's perfect, I'm perfect. There is no such a thing. We're all sinners. We're, we're all weak. We're just trying to make the best within our ability and capacity. And we're hoping that the mercy of Allah will encompass all of us. But if the person was trying, he, he believed and he, he tried. Those angels will give that person the glad tiding. They will come and sit in front of him. 
and they will tell him, we want to give you the glad tidings of what to come. You did good. You did good with your life. You know, I like to give that example always. Uh, uh, you know when you go through a surgery? I hope you don't. But what happens before you go through sur surgery? What happens? You get a, a group of anesthesia. You know, the doctor of anesthesia comes in. Uh, listen, uh, everything is going to be just fine. We're just going to give you a shot. And you're going to go to sleep. And after that, everything will be done. You're not going to feel anything. And then we'll wake you after. These angels do like this to the believer. Don't worry. You're good. You did good with your test. God is pleased with you. And we're here to help you. Your soul is going to come out of your body so easy. But you know what? What to come is so good. Your grave is going to be a garden from paradise. And you're going to have a good life. Things are good, you did good. At this stage, actually, the person would say, okay, let's go. <laughs> that sounds good. That's a good deal. He made that surgery. Get that soul out. Let me go to the next life. Uh, this is how we understand these verses. Indeed, those who said our Lord with Allah, and then they were steadfast. They did their best. They worshiped, they obeyed, they, they strove, they tried. At the time of death, by the tafsir of Abbas, angels will descend upon them. Fear not of what to come. Grieve not over what you're leaving behind. You're going to be okay. What to come is much better for you. At this stage, the person would love to leave, would love to die. I want to tell you something. Death is a relief for the believer. Because this life is a test, remember? Pain. You finish one test, another test is coming. You finish one test, another test is coming. And all of your tests are elevated. Now when you die and you run good, you're receiving the glad tiding, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, praise be to Allah, it's over. So, the angel of death, look how he called the soul of the wicked. He will call the soul of the believer, O oh, good soul, O oh, righteous soul, dwelt in a righteous body. Come out to the pleasure of Allah. Ya ayyatuhal nafsu al-mutma'inna Irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan mardiyya I'm giving the reference for my brothers in, 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 from the revelation so they... Uh, I'm assuring what I said that I'm not making that stuff up. Now the soul also will be shrouded and angels will ascend with it. And they will seek entry into the heavens. Guess what? Access granted. And the soul will go as far as the seventh heaven. We believe that actually there are seven layers of heavens. And there the soul will stand in front of Allah. And then Allah will command these angels to take it back to earth. Because He says, I have decreed that from earth I created you. And back into earth I shall return you. And out of earth I shall raise you. So take, take it back until the resurrection time. Now the soul will go back to earth. Now time for burial. In the way to the graveyard. That's the last bullet. The wicked guy, we'll go back to the wicked guy. The wicked guy, in the way to the cemetery, in the way to the graveyard, he would say, Ya waylaha, Ya waylaha, Ayna tadhabuna biha? Woe to me, where are you taking me? 
Where are you taking me? Slow down. Slow down. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. But does he have a choice? It's over. The righteous one will say, Qaddimuni, Qaddimuni. Let me go. Let me go. Release me. Hey, run. Rush. Three things will follow you to your, to your cemetery, to your grave. Three things. Two of them will return, and one of them will stay with you. Your children will follow you, your family, your wealth. Your credit card probably is going to be in the pocket of somebody else. Simple as it. Your child, your son, maybe will be driving, or your daughter will be driving your car to the cemetery. Your son may be wearing your clothes. And your deeds, good or bad. The money and the children will return. And immediately they will call the Lord to distribute the money. And guess what will stay with you in your grave? Your deeds, what you have done. The life will be actually your company in the grave. Life in the grave. Now you arrived to the cemetery. They dug a hole in the ground. We don't believe in burning people. Then they place you and they fill that hole with dirt and sand. The first thing which will happen, your mother will give you a big hug. Who's your mother? Who's your mother? Earth. From Earth you created. It's so amazing, after we die, the only one who will accept you is your mother. You know, after we die, somebody could be so much in love with you, they love you so much. How long can they keep your body? How long did they keep uh, Michael Jackson's body? I think they, they, well, that was a record or something. 30 days? 30 days. Yeah. But after that, can you leave the body? The, the only place which can, can, the only place which will accept you is your mother. Earth. Now we believe as soon as you're buried, your mother will give you a hug. A big squeeze. Dhamma to the but now for the believer, there will be a release. But for the unbeliever, it will be a continuous hug. Here is the scary piece, and, and I hope I'm not, I'm trying so much not to scare any of you, and I'm sorry if, if I'm, but this is, the, this is what the text says. Intimidating interrogation. As soon as you're buried. Two angels, Scary of nature. They do have names, Munkar and Nakir. They come and wake the deceased person up. And they actually act, command him to sit down. And then they ask him these three questions. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And what is the name of the messenger who was sent to you? Simple questions, by the way. A first grader can answer them. But if you have lived and implemented these answers, you're going to be, be able to answer these questions. If you have lived these answers, if you have the, my Lord is Allah, that's the answer. My Lord is Allah. My religion is in Islam. And the messenger is Muhammad. Simple, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Simple answers. But if you really lived the fact that your Lord is Allah, that you, you obeyed Him, you lived your life in accordance to His way, what He wants you to do, and you implemented this by applying the religion of Islam, and you did not do this based on hearsay, you followed the sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him. 
look at the religion. By the way, when, uh, in one of the wording of, of that particular saying, that those two angels, when they approach the believer, they will find all his righteous deeds. Remember the thing that stays with you. They will leave. Your good deeds are surrounding the person. His charity in one direction, his prayers in one direction, his fasting in another direction, his helping the poor in another direction, his, him being kind and nice to the neighbors is another direction. He's surrounded by all these good deeds. And every time those two angels would try to wake him up from one direction, these good deeds will speak, not from here. He used to do this. He used to help the needy. He used to stand for the truth. He used to support uh, the people with a good cause. Leave them. But at the end, because Allah decreed that they are to wake up. And they ask him, who is your Lord? My Lord is Allah. Like this. Look, because uh, their job, by the way, is to confuse you. Are you sure? Uh, by the way, uh, for a lot of Muslims, uh, the, 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 the subject is, is, is confusing. Fitna like the Dajjal. They are going to actually try to confuse you. Are you sure? You know this Allah? Are you sure? How did you know this? Tell us, how did you know this? But the believer will answer with confidence. As soon as he answers these questions with confidence, then a caller will say, he spoke the truth. Look at this now. Now shroud him from paradise. Furnish his grave from paradise. Expand his grave as far as his eyesight reaches. And I know some of you now say, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Remember that rule that I mentioned? We, uh, this is a different world. You know, I, I want to share something with you. The life in the grave is given a very interesting name in the Quran, in the Revelation. It's called the Barzakh, the barrier. And the word the Barzakh in Arabic is the barrier between the salty water and the sweet water. You know when there is a river and a sea they meet, we know that they do not mix, but they form what? A barrier, right? In between them. Now that barrier would have the attributes of the salt and the attribute of the sweet water. Both. Allah used the name for the grave in Barzakh, that the grave belongs to this world, the location is in this world, but it belongs to the next world. The things will happen there which you do not see. Unseen. So that grave which you filled with dirt and sand will be expanded as far as the eyesight reaches. That person, by the way, will say, after he's showing his place in heaven, in paradise, Oh Allah, make the hour come. Can the day of resurrection be here? I want to go back so I see my family again. I want to go back see my family and my friends. Then the angels will say to him, chill, chill, just go to sleep. It's going to be okay, just go to sleep. Not yet, not yet. And he will go into a state of a sleep until the day of resurrection. This is how the Prophet would. He will sleep like a bride and a groom. He will relax. Very. But before this, by the way, a very good looking person will show up. And he will say to the deceased, I just came to give you the glad tidings, the good news of what to come. He did good. He will ask him that he says, Who are you? I don't know. Who are you? He will say, I'm your righteous deeds. By Allah, he will 
take an oath for him. I only know you quick once it comes to acting righteously, slow once it comes to acting wickedly. You're a good guy. And I'm here to give you company until the day of resurrection. And that is your companion in the grave. Now, rewind to the bad guy. In the way to the cemetery, like we mentioned, slow down, will you take in me? He's placed in the grave. Then those two angels will come to wake him up. Of course, فَلَا صَدَّقَ وَلَا صَلَّمْ وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبَ وَتَوَلَّمْ No good deeds guarding him. He is waking up. He will sit. He is terrified. Who's the Lord? Huh? 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 I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Who? What is your religion? I, I don't know. They will actually try to help him. You didn't hear of Allah, Al Islam. I heard people saying this. Again, the grave is going to turn into a pit from the pits of fire. I don't want to scare you anymore. Let's just leave this guy here. But he will be punished day in and day out in the grave until the day of resurrection. So his life in the grave will not be comfortable. The life of a believer will be comfortable in the grave. Of course, a person will show up weird looking, scary looking. Ah oh man, you messed up big time. Who are you? <laughs> I'm your wicked deeds. By Allah, I only knew you were quick. Once it comes to backbiting, to gossiping, to stealing, to cheating, to killing, to all these bad things. When there's a call to do bad stuff, you're the first in line. But when there is a call to do good stuff, you never should. Are we doing okay? The end of the universe. This is the interesting piece. Like you and me, we have an end. Actually, this world will end. And you know, we, we used to watch these pictures uh, that, uh, you know, uh, like Armageddon and all these other movies. That's what I heard that I watched, and that's beside the point. You know that the world is about to end, and you get this IT guru uh, actor, he some breaks some code or something. Huh? He does some good. Oh, he saved the world. Wow. There is no such thing. I'm sorry, I, I know I'm in California, I'm in San Diego, I know this. I know, and I know I'm in an educational institution, and, but I'm telling you, I'm 100% certain that this will never happen. When he decrees the end of it, it's done. There is no such a code, there is no such IT. It's over. This world will end, no question about it. And no one can stop it. No one can stop it. Like the human being, we do have some signs that indicate our end. This world also, this universe, there are certain signs that can indicate or which indicate the nearness of the end. What are some of the signs that we have which indicate our end? What? Sickness, old age, gray hair, not necessarily all the time, but actually the death of a loved one is amazing. Like you see your father, for example, your mother, grandfather, grandmother dying. This is indicating that you're next, you know, 
you want to see your father or mother dying that means but of course you can die by all of a sudden too there are certain signs which are set uh, that subject by the way by itself can be a, a different presentation but let me tell you what is happening here what we believe as Muslims we believe that this world is going will be bad, 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 bad there is a lot of corruption There is a lot of mischief in earth, and that will not stop. Actually, it will reach the peak with the coming of a very interesting character called the Antichrist. A person will actually come walking into this earth, called the Messiah, the Dajjal, the Antichrist. He will be supported by so many powers. God will be giving him, enabling him to get these powers through other means like jinn to test us. He will call people to his worship. He will travel through earth like a wind. He's going to have that private jet. Now, this is in brief. This man will be killed at the hands of Jesus, the son of Maryam. Isa, We believe as Muslims, and I know this is for a Christian, this is a big kama. We actually believe that Jesus was not crucified as Muslims. We believe that he was raised. We believe that there was a plot to kill him. But God saved him. He is raised and he is with Allah as we speak right now in a form or a shape that only Allah knows. And at a certain time, he will send him back to earth. Down to earth. And one of the first tasks which he will do, taking care of this huge, challenging character, the Antichrist, killing him, meaning. And from there on, there will be peace in earth. He will actually rule this world, govern this world out of Jerusalem. And he will bring peace in earth. The Christian is working with this, by the way. It's a little bit confusing because they associate this with the day of resurrection. They actually believe that this will happen when the day of resurrection is here. No, no. We believe that this will happen before the day of judgment. Actually, he is a sign that the day of resurrection is approaching. وَإِنَّهُ لَعَلَمٌ لِلسَّاعِ And he is a sign for the other. He's, he will rule out of Jerusalem. This world will experience the best years ever when he comes back. He's behind him, Prophet Jesus. Beautiful. I would love just to address this subject. He's coming back and what he will do. But there will be a lot of blessing. Uh, actually, if you read the, 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 the book of Revelation, Christianity it tells you that the children will be playing with the snakes. The wolf will be running around with the sheep because there is justice. There is peace in earth. After that, this world will go so bad again. So, it will be sort of declining now, by the way, but we have hope that we're going to go back up with the second coming of who? Of Jesus, of his descending. And we believe, by the way, that he's going to descend, he's going to be a Muslim. He's going to look like me. Seriously. We actually believe that. And he's going to pray like us. And you know, I, uh, I think I was reading the news being something in a magazine two years ago. And they had on the front page, uh, 
Jeans is in a comfortable uh, uh, a car that opens the type of corporate convertible car, and he's doing like this. Jeans is in America. You know, I don't know if any of you saw this, but it was an interesting article. Uh, Christians believe that he is uh, returning, but again, they associate this with the day of resurrection, and that's the, the big difference there. Amazing, look at Islam, amazing. I'm talking now how, how this world will end according to Islam. Look at this. Amazing, just toward the end of the world, just toward it, when things are really going so bad, God will send the wind, soft wind, that will suffocate the lives of the believers, the good people. The good people will die. Those things are bad. It's not fun to live. Now, the worst of the human race will be left on earth. And on them, the destruction of this universe will happen. And they will die then. Resurrection. We're approaching the end of the uh, presentation here. Resurrection. Now everyone is dead and beneath the ground. Only Allah is the ever living, doesn't die. All of your body, by the way, will decay. Except a very interesting that actually uh, scientifically been proven now, a bone. Who can read the word? Huh? huh? Say? Yes, Karsis. A spinal bone the size of a lentil seed. For the uh, brothers of Islam, كُلُّبْنِ آدَمَ يَبْلَى إِلَّا عَجْبُ الذَّنْبِ عَجْبُ الذَّنْبِ I'm sorry, عَجْبُ الذَّنْبِ All the body of the children of Adam, this was said 1435 years ago. The Prophet said that. All the body of the son of Adam will be decayed, except something called that little bone. From it, he will be made remade again. So underneath the ground, everyone is dead. The only one who is alive is, is Allah. Now, Allah will send a rain. Like, uh, yeah, I, I, I used another word that like this floor of a man. And that will contact that little lentil seed size bowl and your body will start growing underneath the ground. But you're going to be giving a different body now because it's a different life. The soul is the same, but the body changes from one phase to another, from one stage to another. Allah will command earth to split all you. And all the human race will rise from beneath the earth. Imagine if we look like this from beneath earth. Man, what's happening? I've got all those people here. You know when you have a, a one million people in one place, one million man march. Have you ever thought about this? This is the largest gathering ever from Adam until the last soul born will be in one place. One land, look in the sea. Now it's time for reckoning, time for judgment. The day of judgment. You're going to have a new body, a new earth, a new sun. A very anxious, worried, and frightened people in a very long day. That day is 50,000 years long. A very lengthy day. Meanwhile, the condition of the believers are different, meaning believers will be comforted. Rakim, on the day, what will save you is your belief in Allah. That's your path to salvation. The act of Tawheed, attributing, attributing unity to Allah regarding His divine essence, actions, deeds, and attributes, as well as His rights. That you believe in Allah. You believe that He is the one who created everything. 
He is the one who owns everything. He is the one who takes care of everything. He is the one who gives you the life that you have. He is the one who provides for you. He is the one who will decree death upon you at one stage. He will say that you're going to die now. But He is the one who will raise you in the day of resurrection. And He is the one who will stand for judgment in front of Him and you're hoping that He will be merciful to you. Then if you're smart, intelligent, wish in Him alone, obey Him, serve Him. That's your salvation. That you make a commitment in your heart with no reservation that you're going to worship Allah. You're going to obey Allah. You're going to submit to Him. And you strive, you try. Will you be able to completely fulfill that or not? Allah knows this. But this is your path to salvation. Of course, on that day, God will forgive everything. If you come in the way of resurrection, If you come to me in the day of resurrection with that form of belief, that you believe in Allah, you do not pray in other names than Allah, you single out Allah once it comes to your actions. If you come with this with sins, He can forgive everything. But there is one type of sins which will not be forgiven because it has to be settled. The rights of others. I cannot steal your money in this world and then come in the day of resurrection and ask Allah to forgive me. Allah says, no, you give back the money. Otherwise you don't have to pay that money back with deeds. I'm going to take some of your good deeds, give it to that person. Your prayers, your charity, some of your charity will be given to that person whom you stole with his money in this world. So injustices must be settled. You see, whatever shortcomings you had between you and Allah, as long as it does not indulge the rights of other people, can be forgiven, can be pardoned. But injustices have to be settled. Not just towards human beings, towards animals. We actually believe that there is a woman, a lady, who went to hell because of a cat. A cat. She caged that cat and did not provide food for it. Food, not uh, uh, life for it. Food or both. لا هي أطعمتها ولا هي بركتها تأكل من خشاش الأرض. She did not feed the cat, nor let the cat go, so the cat can eat, find its, 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 its food. And we do have actually also an account of a woman, of a lady who went to paradise because of giving a drink to a dog. She was working in the desert and she saw that dog so thirsty. So thirsty. It was a deep well. She went back to the well. She filled her shoe, one of her shoes with water, and giving the dog water to drink. She went to paradise. For injustice is not just to human, actually to other creation as well. Now, destination paradise. In the way to paradise, we cross over hellfire. That's how it's designed. We cross over a bridge, thinner than a strand of hay, shorter than the edge of sword. Those who didn't do well will fall down. Those who did well will cross to paradise. Uh, very uh, quickly here, before we go into the question and answer. Paradise is the place of your dream. Heaven, that's how you should, we should use the word for you to Whatever you want to do is there. In heaven, what an eye never seen, what an ear never heard, and whatever you think of, you will find it. Imagine this, close your eyes, close your eyes. French fries, right here. You don't even have to wait for the oil to cook or drive to McDonald's. Right here. Whatever you want. If you want to fly, you can fly. If you want to have a, a, a football league, you can have a football league. What, what is the name of this guy who throws the ball back, back, back or something? 
Uh, if you want to get worth them back, you can get worth them back. For the little bit in paradise. You eat not because you're hungry, but, but actually you eat because you desire to eat. And here's the interesting piece. You don't have to worry about slim fast. You know, uh, one of the most fascinating things about paradise for me personally, what I love most, something very personal, but I know it's disgusting to some of you. You don't have to go to the bathroom in paradise. It's eternal. No more worries, no more fear, no jealousy, no anxiety, no sickness. But you know, one of the, the greatest pleasures in paradise is actually seeing Allah, seeing the Creator. Your neighbor could be Jesus, your neighbor could be Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The prophets and messengers, righteous people, no flower land is there. Peace, quiet, you're high all the time there, by the way. Serenity, state of serenity, peace. Salam and salam. And that's where we're striving to go. And that's where we believe. We're hoping to go. And that is why we're committing our lives to that way. Because we believe that. We have certainty in that. And that's why we're striving to get there. But at the end of the day, we're hoping that Allah will deliver us. I rest my case and I want to take فاسألوا أهل الذكر إن كنتم لا تعلمون